Lacking motivation to do content, uh, but alas, I have been playing a little bit to try and earn the Operation Winter Challenges, and part of that involves playing the F1F5 to go bomb a couple of bases. So it's got a very impressive bomb load, but Enduring Confrontation maps have come to realistic battles. And as you see here, the fuel load that I have will basically just barely get me back to base. Now, I do apologise, there is copyright on music in the background. And uh, th this incorporation of Enduring Confrontation into Air Realistic is an interesting and divided topic. On one hand, there is absolutely nothing to do, and on the other hand, there is plenty of things that they've just basically put in. The 25-minute timer still it basically stands. It's the same timer that's been in all the regular matches. However, all the objectives and all the things from Enduring Confrontation still exist. Bombing bases and doing those kind of tasks still exist. Destroying and uh, escorting bombers and destroying attackers and destroying a certain amount of ground units, etc, etc. They are all persistent within the game mode. What's interesting is how every player spreads out and it, while I don't know if it is a fantastic step forward or whether it is a step backward, you know, it is a strong basis for, well, subsequent aircraft to come. More long range, more uh, sort of larger map, varied missions, etc. And for such stuff as Fox 3 missiles, right? And the R-77 and the uh, AMRAMs, I think they're called. However, you know, these are really, I guess, good enough maps for the current meta. Uh, I hope they're doing testing at least based on other things. And this SU-7 is absolutely unlucky here. Uh, <laughs> again, the only kill I get of the whole entire match is dedicate the rest to bombing bases because, well, I have a task to complete. But anyway, while War Thunder has and will probably have the potential to have an F-14 and several other different things, the expansion of the battle rating range from 10.0 to 11.0 and then 11.0 to 11.3 is to, well, really sort of develop and hopefully decompress a little more that being said though they did add an su-22 and a couple of other premium and squadron vehicles to the 11.0 so technically they're not top tier even though it basically is alas you can't win all the battles you fight but essentially with active radar and some other stuff that might be coming in the future introduction of these sort of things really is quite interesting and with the map rotations being quite small as they are because obviously a lot of combat is quick and efficient that suits a particular kind of competitive style whereas you know war thunder currently this is unseen right this kind of thing this match was 20 plus minutes long and all i did was take off three times drop a couple of bombs and shoot down an su7 so i mean it remains to be seen whether this kind of style map will be good for war thunder i'm playing 9.7 10.0 right now so this is really the i get the, the broader focus of enduring confrontation and this is the helicopter ec map as well so I, I really don't know. Granted, it actually gives aircraft time to disengage and also re-engage targets and also gives you time to target as well. But it is a little bit boring, I will admit. Even with the fast-paced action that jets tend to be, there is a lot of downtime. And I get that that's what it was like in the real world. There is probably a fine balance between these style of maps and what we have currently. At least, I don't want to see top-tier jets being played on Malta. That is absolutely horrid. But hey... You can't win everything, right? I guess this is just one step forward into the development of what could be considered beyond visual range engagements. This, if this is something that they're considering with further Cold War developments and late 80s technology, we're not too far off the f f far flung fields of having F 14s and uh, MiG 31s and, and MiG 29s and SU 27s and all those other wonderful jets uh, flying around in War Thunder. But what it does do is allow for implementation of more modern vehicles and definitely increases player attention. And certainly I hope to see there be more interesting changes. Anyhow, the introduction of Enduring Confrontation to Top Tier certainly has caught a lot of us veteran pilots off guard. And the extra time spent, you know, climbing, side climbing, uh, flying in a, in a dead straight line has allowed me to practice my guitar skills and certainly has allowed me to go do other things and edit other videos so you know i'm not exactly complaining there 
granted the front line is so far away that it actually makes combat a relative interesting debacle but yeah there you go really let me know what you think of enduring confrontation maps in air realistic battles are they too much of a pain to fly on do you have enough fuel capacity because we're going to need drop tanks eventually if this continues on have you had any problems with the size of the maps or have you had a fuel issue what kind of things have you encountered in enduring confrontation realistic mode anyhow i'm off to go do some more challenges we'll catch you in the next one Bye bye